Well, I just went to introduce myself. My name is Deborah Hughes. I'm a, I'm a retired LPN. Uh, I've lived in West Virginia since 2010, but I spent all my summers there. Um, I've always been interested in herbal medicine. Uh, I've just picked up little pieces here and there until I started studying with Dr. Hassan Am Amjad. I don't know if you, any of you are familiar with him. I studied under him for three years before he passed away. And uh, one of the first lectures he ever gave was on this subject, basic kitchen medicine. So I've got some stuff to hand out. It's right in there. And there's more here too. That's one thing that always held me back about uh, herbal medicine was um, the fact that you, it always seemed like you have to be a botanist or you have to be really wealthy to be able to order all this exotic stuff. And it's just not true. It's not. You can actually on any budget go to any grocery store and get eight items, which there's more, but I always start out with the eight. Eight items that you can make medicine with. And the idea is to help have a little more control over your health. There's no substitute for modern uh, you know, medicine. We all need that sometimes. But minor ailments or preventative things, we can do a lot of that at home. Um, like I said, I developed an in. My job as a nurse actually got me started. I became interested in herbal medicine because of the amount of medications I would give patients. And then in a second round to Counter, you know, counter the effects of the first round of medication. So that's basically what was my initial motivation, but as I get into it over the years, I'm, I'm just really sold on it. It's like Hippocrates, you know, Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And I really can see where that is true. Um, and the whole premise is, 75% of our immune system is in our gut. So if we, if we know that and we use certain things to help us, we cut down inflammation, which is what really causes a lot of our illnesses. Um, I just want to add that if you have any doubt, don't ever do anything, especially if you're pregnant. Always check with your doctor before you, you know especially certain things, which I'll mention as we go. Okay, um, the use of herbs and spices is the oldest form of medicine known to mankind. And sickness or discomfort is usually caused by a lower immune system, which is in the gut. It starts in the gut. All right, I'm just going to get started. If you have any questions, stop me. Apple cider vinegar, I'm going to start with that. Apple cider vinegar is awesome. You can use it internally or externally. And externally, you can um, use for soaking uh, to relieve mild joint dis discomfort. And you can use it in your hair to get rid of stuff, you know, uh, build up. But internally, mixed with water in small doses, um, it gives you an energy boost. It kind of resets the gut, which you see of the body's immune system. It can be used for indigestion. And a lot of times, people get um, acid reflux. And you know, you always want to check with your doctor, but sometimes acid reflux is not because there's not, and there's not too much acid. Sometimes it's not enough. And sometimes if you take a little vinegar, that will, if it helps your indigestion, it means that you're hydrochloric acid. As we get older, it becomes weaker, and you know the apple cider vinegar kind of resets it. Um, apple cider.
cider vinegar can help prevent common digestive disorders as we get older, improves the immune system, and it aids in stabilization of the uh, blood sugar. Unfiltered is best, and that cloudy, the cloudy thing can go up with the mother. Right. Well, the thing about taking uh, vinegar, always think of it equal parts water. I always add honey, and I'll get to that when I get to the honey, uh, honey or, or other herbs. But you always take, I would start out with a teaspoon a day, and always chase it down with a glass of water because you don't want it to burn your esophagus. And always check with your doctor, especially if you're pregnant. Um, I don't want to forget anything. Yeah, like colds. I've had a cold, so I take it like three or four times, or like every three or four hours. I mix it with other things and take it every three or four hours. Vinegar is a natural antiseptic with antibiotic and antifungal properties. It contains malic acid and acetate, I can, never, I can never pronounce this, A-C-E-T-I-C -E acid. Um, it's also helpful for bladder irritation. Now, if you have a full-blown bladder infection, I'll by all means go to the doctor. But if you, you know, if you have, a, or if you're prone to bladder irritation, this helps a lot. Just follow it with a lot of water. It helps um, maintain a proper pH balance. Um, a good daily dosage of vinegar or vinegar mixtures is one teaspoon per day. Increasing it gradually to one tablespoon one or two times a day. Okay, and in Greece they use this. This is a very ancient form of medicine. They mix it with honey and call it oxymel, O-X-Y-M-E-L. Uh, and you can mix it with other spices and herbs. Um, it boosts your energy, and it acts as an expectorant, and aids in digestion. And uh, the next one is honey, the perfect food. Honey has antibacterial, antimicrobial. Um, it improves your immune system and digestive system. You never want to give it to a child, only one, because of botulism. I mean, that's a disclaimer, you know. Some people do, but I don't recommend it. Um, it improves the immune system, digestive system. And has minerals, vitamins, and other properties. Um, I like raw organic honey, um, but really, honey, as long as it has the pollen and stuff in it, is good. Um, let's see, I don't want to forget anything. Um, honey, along with vinegar, cinnamon, or ginger, provides an even wider health benefit. Um, you know, I use this. Poppy sleep, honey poppy sleep. For my animals, I mix it with turmeric. And then they get like little things, little abrasions or hot spots because they always lick it off. It helps it and it doesn't hurt them if they lick it off. Also, with honey, if you know somebody who's had chemo or you know somebody who has like severe dementia and is not eating well, um, honey's like the perfect food. If you mix it with yogurt, It'll give them their nutrition. Because you know, a lot of people have chemo, they get this thing called cachexia, where they just have body, you know, body wasting from not being able to eat because the chemo, you know, acts on their digestive system. So that really works well. Um, let me see if I forgot anything. It also stabilizes blood sugar and reduces metabolic stress. Does anybody have any questions so far? Surprises me that you say that. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add something on to it. If you have, if you were able to get local honey. Yeah, it's good for your allergies. allergies. That's, well, what even, that's what I was going to say. I figure everybody knew that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you can get local, it's better than just getting store bought. Okay. That helps act as a natural antihistamine. Right. And but I sometimes know. you just can't. And whatever, as long as it has pollen, it's yeah, good. It yeah, that's with, uh, your, your ability to cope with it. Yeah. And I know up on uh, maybe the way uh, head out towards Tilden and whatnot, there's a local beehive and stuff right there. Yeah. And I learned too. <laughs> one of our members, uh, this, this lady's partner, uh, 
but normally throughout the year we will have honey from different seasons, spring, summer, fall, um, good for allergies, good for all this other stuff. Uh, so keep us in mind. If you need us. I want to go revisit what you were saying. So if I understand you, you're saying if you get the local honey, it will help you to give you some immunity yeah. to the allergy. That are locally yes. in the air. If you, get, if you can get store-bought and it will help boost your, uh, your allergy immune system so you kind of cope with it better, but local honey will is probably the best for allergies. I use it every year now. So if my stuff. daughter who's in Phoenix could get local Phoenix honey, right. yeah. it might cure her allergies. Yeah. Yeah. It particularly helps with the seasonal allergies. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to have pretty severe fall seasonal allergies. Um, even taking even taking allergy medications, you know, once or twice a day, I was still suffering pretty badly. My eyes would swell shut and all that. But ever since I started doing honey, I usually do one, just a small spoon of honey in the morning when the uh, season starts to arrive, which I should be doing now, actually. Um, it, I mean, it has reduced it to the point where I rarely have to take medication. Rarely. I have still have to take honey and allergy medicine because my allergies have are known to cause nosebleeds and I uncontrollably crying and if I'm not careful my throat will close up. Mm. Yeah. An old person showed me he used to put get a half an English muffin, put some butter and a tablespoon of honey on it and that's the way he would mm -hmm. honey gel. I've done that that was I always add some honey to my P P B and J. Well that brings another question. If you're blood sugar has been high and yeah. your doctor wants you to cut down on the sugar, uh, would that apply to honey? Or Ish. That's what's going to be my okay, question because well, it does stay, you're saying it stabilizes, but it's sugar. Honey does stabilize in a way that sugar doesn't. It works in your liver with glycogen, you know, but like I said, you always want to consult, don't ever, you know, consult with your doctor about that. But uh, yeah, I would always recommend honey over from my understanding, it's safer for, um, like, diabetics, for example. Yeah. It's safer than than regular um, sugar, but they don't consider it to be a low glycemic substitute, like um, agave nectar. That's considered to be um, safe for people. It's a natural yeah. glucose. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like my last whatever they did. It was like just below before they start calling you diabetic. Yeah, so yeah. it's like. I think we just need to have a service on honey. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. What were you going to ask? No, that was going to be my okay. question because it is it is got a pretty high glucose. I'm just surprised you say that it stabilizes. But yeah. You're saying it's not as much glucose. So I'll go check on that. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm going to go on to one of my other favorites, black peppercorns. I love to think about black peppercorns. It was one thing I thought I was fascinated when I studied under Dr. Amza that black peppercorns was more valuable than gold at one point. Mm -hmm. Pirates used to take ships for black peppercorns. I think that's fascinating. Um, well, no wonder. It's delicious. Get rid of that. Anyway, um, I mean, it's good. It's good for taste, of course, and it's good medicinally. Uh, it has antibacterial and antioxidant effects. Whole black peppercorns aid digestion, and it helps uh, prevent intestinal gas. It's also good if you have migraines. It helps with migraine headaches. Um, if you have fever, it causes um, sweating, and it has a diuretic effect. Uh, which helps, you know, with fever. Black peppercorns also help treating headaches. For spicing food, this is important. Um, it, black, whole black peppercorns has uh, enzymes in it, and they dissipate shortly after you, you grind them up. So it's best to, I mean, I don't buy pepper already ground up. I used to, but I don't anymore. I buy it and grind it as I use it because then the enzymes are still left in there. And some things I go what ahead. just eating whole black pepper? Oh, I, yeah. Like, no. I 
that's what, that's good for you. And it's good in soups and it's good in teas. It's a whole black pepper kind of thing. I always wondered why people would actually grind it instead of just putting it yeah, in the Yeah, put the whole thing. Yeah. It's just a thing that people do. But I like to, in fact, I, I um, put a recipe that I, it's like a medicine soup. And you put whole black pepper kind of, a lot of teas, you put whole black pepper kind of thing. Anytime. It's really, it's really good for you. Uh, for flus, colds, um, used whole black peppercorns and ginger root helps liquefy mucus. Um, and uh, you know the other thing, other thing is uh, I'm going to go over turmeric. It helps the bioavailability of um, um, turmeric if you use whole black peppercorns with it. But I take turmeric sometimes and don't take whole black peppercorns. I take turmeric every day, but we'll get to that. Um, but it just does uh, increase the bioavailability. Ginger root. Um, I love ginger root too. I'm sure you're all familiar with ginger root. It can keep a long time in the fridge. Um, I mean, it's excellent it, to put in a dish. I mean, it tastes good. That's the way it is good for your digestive system a lot. Um, it can be steeped in water to make a tea, mixed with honey, um, and many other things for indigestion, motion sickness, fever, nausea, and vomiting. For sore throats, you can cut a thin slice and coat it with honey and suck on it on your mouth, and it really does help a lot. Um, oh, yeah, and if you have arthritis, you can cut pieces off and rub it on the area. It really it does help with uh, um, arthritis or arthritic pain in your joints. But this is one of the things you need to check with the doctor for if you're pregnant. Another thing I like to do is um, I make a, um, a massage oil with ginger. I take ginger and put it in uh, olive oil and cayenne pepper and let it um, just sit for a while. And then sit, you know, uh, take out the, the ginger and uh, it makes really good uh, topical massage oil. Um, why do you peel the root? Well, I don't always. It depends on what I'm going to use it for. But if I'm going to use it in food, I always peel it. If I use it in tea, I just slice it. And, and why, if you're using it in food, do you peel it? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't like the taste of it. It's fibrous. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, and never, it's hard. I never peel ginger. I don't think but I don't peel it if I'm going to put it in, like, soup or if I'm going to put it in uh, tea or something like that. I don't. But I guess it's just... A preference, whatever you prefer. I just keep picturing, you know, you've, you've, you've said a few times to uh, ask your doctor, like if you're pregnant or something. I just keep picturing the doctors around here being like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that if, if um, unless otherwise instructed by your doctor, um, if you're pregnant, um, ginger is safe up until the third trimester because it's a natural blood thinner. Hmm. It could cause hemorrhaging and um, in some cases, if you eat it all the time, like every day, a whole bunch of it, it could cause early labor. Which is even something that doctors around here would know. You'd be like, is it safe for me to take ginger? Oh, I don't know. Ginger. Uh, no, but i got to say it anyway. You know, I have to. Put it now. Apparently, they didn't even know that there was a home birth center around here. Uh, I think some of them would, but. So, ginger root it acts like a natural antiseptic, uh, and it helps increase circulation. Can use it topically. It does help. I use it in a lot of salads. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I like to. I like to have it. Yeah. Salad. What about? I sometimes use just for flavoring and and some help. The two paste. What is? They have a flavor of ginger. Mm -hmm. That and it's all, that's all it is. Is the ginger that they really process down. You know, I can't say because I've never used it. Well, ginger Somebody else would have. I, I can't see why it wouldn't, but I taste. don't yeah. use it. Especially if I'm making a sauce that I want yeah. a ginger flavor in, I, I will add some paste rather than try to deal with the. You know, and uh, if you have like an upset stomach too, this also comes in um, capsule forms. Mm -hmm. Some people take it in capsule form. I don't, but. You Whenever we travel, we take ginger oh, yeah. capsules with us. Yeah. What about the ginger that's in little cubes? Um, Crystallized? Yeah. yeah, that's good. To, that's good. I mean, that that's good for you too. 
Back on, I mean, they're, they're good for you. I just, I don't use those either, but I know that people do. You need to watch the sugar on that, though, John. But I that just Irish, use... That's crystallizing sugar. Right. And like I said, I use it in teas, I use it in oil, I use it in food, and I use it in sweet. And they have a lovely ginger wine over in Scotland. Oh, okay. Mm. So now I can say it's I'm drinking it for my health benefits. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, cinnamon is the next uh, one. How about uh, what spices and herbs go with the uh, with the ginger? You mentioned here along with desired spices. Oh spices. well, whatever. Like, uh, you, you have any special it, preferences? There? I do, um, but you know it's whatever you want. But I I like uh, um, whole peppercorn. Cayenne pepper, uh, turmeric, cinnamon, um, honey, vinegar, garlic. All of the other stuff on there. Just like yeah. whatever. You can put whatever you want with it. Okay. And it just, it's good for you. Um, anybody else have any questions? Okay, the next one is cinnamon. It comes in uh, six powder or capsules. I don't use the capsules, um, and I use the powder sometimes. Mostly, I I use the six, but I buy the bark. They come like in the interesting from the bark, but in any of them are okay. Uh, cinnamon is antiviral, antifungal, and antibiotic. Um, if you have a cold, virus, or flu, you can drink at least three cups of cinnamon tea a day, especially at the early onset of the symptoms. For bronchitis, cinnamon tea is really helpful with fennel. It acts like an expectorant. Um, it's good. It's really good for increased energy and mental alertness. It boosts it's the an applesauce. Yeah, it boosts the immune system, lowers and helps regulate blood sugar of type two diabetes. And this really is important. I recommend this to diabetics. You know, if you take the capsules, take a couple, but yeah. This is something um, you need to know that you don't have any kidney involvement before you use it. Because it, it will, you know, sometimes make it more complicated. But this is something you would definitely want to check with your doctor, but I know it does lower your blood sugar. Uh, drinking three tub cu cups of cinnamon tea daily is highly recommended. It lowers cholesterol. Um, like you're supposed to drink eight glasses of water a day, right? Yeah. Good luck with that. Now, you can use the, if you don't have capsules and you want to use it for your blood sugar or something, and all you have is the powder, you can use it, but you don't ever take the powdered form, like with a spoon. You need to mix it with a few drops of water and make like little lozenges out of it. Don't ever, because that'll choke you. Yeah. I know people that do that. That's why I'm mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Point. It is one. <laughs> you just need to make a paste and roll it into little balls and um, that'll work. Does anybody have any questions? I thought cinnamon also for cholesterol. Hmm? I thought cinnamon was also, they thought, helpful for cholesterol. Yeah, that's, yeah it is. Yeah, lowering cholesterol. What do you mean by the capsules? I have never heard of like a cinnamon. Yeah, they have cinnamon. They have cinnamon capsules. Never heard of just using a cold cinnamon. Yeah, some people, I mean, they're good to take, like, if you're driving and you get really sleepy, you need to take a couple and it'll wake you up. Uh, I mean, no, I don't, I don't use the capsules. My husband has. He works midnights, um, and he's used them, and they work. For some people, cinnamon is a natural aphrodisiac. <laughs> okay, well, I have an <laughs> I don't know well, about that. Well, I'm well, sure it is. I just uh, it hasn't something I've met yet. Well, or natural after you yet. I'm sure a lot of <laughs> Any any other questions? Okay, the next one is um, turmeric, curcumin. Comes in caps, powdered or root. And I've never 
found the root since I moved here. I used to work with the root, um, you know, in Virginia, but that's okay. I used the powder and it worked fine. And I do take the capsules. I take two capsules every day. Um, turmeric, um, it is a great culinary spice, but it's great medicine. It's anti-inflammatory, antibiotic, and antiseptic. It's helpful, really helpful to the digestive system. It improves the bile flow and the liver function. Now, there's some studies where it may help prevent colon cancer and Alzheimer's disease because it's passed through the brain, uh, the, the blood-brain barrier. It passes right through it, and it decreases some of the beta amyloids, which is the basis of hmm. Alzheimer's, found in Alzheimer's. What foods are normally spiced with turmeric? In my world, everything. Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> everything. I put it in soups. I put it. I put it in tea. I put it in. I, I've even put it in mashed potatoes. You put it in rice. Rice, mashed potatoes. Where, where do you get it? Turmeric, like I use it in everything, like I do cayenne, like I do black peppercorn. I put it in tea, you know, I make tea, I put it in, I make it in soups, sauces. I even I put it in my pasta sauces. I put it, I put it in everything. I everything's it. yellow, Grandma. Hmm? Everything's yellow. Everything's yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, surprise. You know, one time I make salves, and one time I, I thought, wow, that's really great. <laughs> when I first started out, <coughs> years ago. I thought, you know what, that's so good, I'm going to make a salve. So I made a salve with plantain, which is your weed, it's mm -hmm. really good. And I made a salve, and I put the turmeric in. And it worked really good, but it turned everything yellow, and there was no good. Now, I had socks that were ruined, because I was always getting cuts and stuff, I want to work outside. So I can't put that in there. <laughs> I turned everything yellow. So any questions about turmeric? 
And it's really your liver loves it. So it just all works. If you get if you get a tummy pain, um, usually after side of the and a little bit of baking soda, you feel okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, peroxide. Yeah, exactly. I look at the hard way. <laughs> I just try not to have it happen anymore. <laughs> well, if you have very sensitive skin and it dyes your skin, just take a make a little paste out of some water, um, vinegar, and baking soda, and it won't harm your skin because it's sensitive. And turmeric does not go in that, right? Any questions? Just remember your brain loves it, your heart loves it, your bladder, your liver loves it. Okay, cayenne pepper. Um, I use a powdered form. Um, you can use peppers. Most all hot peppers have capsaicin. I can't ever pronounce that, but you know, it's the ingredient. Capsaicin. That's it. Capsaicin. But anyway, yeah, but I use cayenne pepper. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I say that about all of them. It's one of my favorite spices. Um, it's good medicinally, internally, and externally. Internally, it, it stimulates your digestion. Uh, it boosts your immune system. It is excellent for your circulatory, your heart, and all your uh, veins and arteries, especially your peripheral. Circulation is really good for it. It can be used to treat mild hypertension. It improves the blood flow to um, all areas of the body. It also promotes um, increased mucus, you know, in your mucous membranes, which helps a lot. Uh, stimulates the release of mucus in the respiratory system. It maintains healthy mucous membranes throughout the body. It also aids in the restoration of digestive secretions and absorption of nutrients. Like I said, when we get older, our uh, stomach acids and enzymes, they get weaker. And this along, you know, like vinegar, uh, really helps kind of reset your gut and uh, kind of boost up your immune system. Um, a good dose is a half a teaspoon per day. I put it in my coffee, my tea, food, of course. Um, I put it in everything. I don't, I don't, I, I usually use more than that. But I like, I like cayenne. I try to, I, if you put it a little bit in coffee, um, like a couple springs, like a quarter teaspoon, it just kind of gives it a zing. I even put it in lemonade. I put it in my iced tea. I put, I it, put it in hot chocolate. Yeah. Snack, oh, yeah. Hot chocolate. Chocolate. You know, like this, uh, cinnamon. You put cinnamon and coffee. Yeah. You know, cinnamon and cayenne. A little bit of cinnamon and cayenne into a, on your. Uh, and you're taking your medicine. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, good. I like cinnamon. I like cinnamon and cayenne and coffee. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It really adds a little thing to it. I'm a little bit confused. I, I think I grew cayenne pepper, and I have enough. Probably 50 years. I can bring some here next okay. time. But it 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 it's it's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you know, just uh, two little flakes, uh, you'll <laughs> it'll explode in your mouth. Yeah. And, and it, it's very strong. I use it in soups and things, but I use very very little. I'll bring some. Yeah, I think most that's of good us, for you. That's yeah. exactly what you're doing. I think most of us deal with the powder. Yeah. Oh. I do because I can um, I can control how much I put in there. I'm not a big fan of hot, hot food, but I love cayenne. I love that little thing. I, I, I used to grow cayenne, and I, I would dry it and make the flakes, and I also ground it up. Because yeah, we have it. I have tons of So do I. It, it's dry. And it's, yeah. 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 I'd like powder it. Good. I'll okay. take some. I, I mean, I have powder at the house, but I can always use some fresh pepper. Good for you. Okay, you can also use it topically. Um, Ow. <laughs> I know, I know everybody says that, but I've actually done that and it helps a lot. Uh, let's see. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. Okay, there's a substance P. Um, P. 
Capsaicin is the active ingredient of cayenne pepper and has been found beneficial in easing pain. Substance P is the mediator of pain impulses, and capsaicin interrupts and depletes the substance P. It lessens the pain message to the brain. Um, so topically, um, you can use it on areas to relieve pain from muscle spasms or arthritis. Just be careful never to put it on open areas. Or near your eye. Well, yeah, I'm, this is mostly like for your legs or yeah. you know, muscle, always, muscle yeah, joints. I, I put it into my own healing cells and uh, healing yeah, I have body a, scrubs. I have a just set like a for it. Just a bit and it uh, kind of boosts the circulatory system, kind of numbs. Now that's something I use when I make my salves. I use uh, fresh hot peppers. That's what I put in the oil and let it sit for a couple of weeks and then um, strain it and then mix it with some peas. What kind of oil do you use? Like mm -hmm. I use oil, olive oil. Olive oil? Or coconut oil. 